Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I wanna to talk to you about what is the average PhD acceptance rate. So I asked the reciprocity community, what is the best estimate of your average PhD um, doctoral program acceptance rate at your institution? This was in March, 2020, when things are going crazy with the COVID vi um, virus. But, you know, I did get some responses. Um, you know, 20 individuals responded and here's the responses. So 50% um, of them are roughly one to 5%. So most people have, or more, most institutions are one to 5%. Um, a chunk of them are six to 10%. And so when you sort of add this all up, it's Pareto distributed, if you don't know what that is, but if you take this, um, add this all up and you look at the expected average, um, so it's about 13% or so one in eight individuals that apply to a PhD program. Now the mode, right? So this is the, the, the answers or the responses that got the most That's 3%. So you're looking at, you know, one in 30, um, individuals will get into a PhD program. So not all that good. Um, you know, why are PhD programs really low in general or their acceptance rates are really low in general? It's, um, you know, we're really just looking for most PhD programs are looking for doctoral students that are going to work really, really hard and um, they're going to be a dedicated professional, whatever that looks like. Right. So imagine that the program, the PhD program is very akin to getting into law school, medical school, those kind of things. And everybody just wants to work with somebody that's dedicated and smart. Um, and, you know, the best sort of way to think about what an ideal PhD candidate looks like is there's a book that's out there. Um, you know, it's kind of a practitioner book and stuff like that, but uh, um, not to knock in any sort of way. But, but in general, you know, um, you think of it as an ideal team player, right? So this is, um, uh, there's a book and I can't remember the, the person's name, but it's called the ideal team player that wrote it, um, blanking on it. But anyways, uh, you're looking for individuals that are hungry, humble, and smart. So people that are really passionate and they want to do whatever it is that they want to do, that they're humble, that they are easy to work with, right? That they're a team player and they're smart. They, they have, um, credentials to get them through a PhD program. And so you have to look to see if they're relevant for the area and they actually match up with the area, um, all those kind of things, right? So what are the key areas that many people screen in PhD programs? Um, you know, probably one of the, the, the easiest one that people do, and this is just people acting very rationally in terms of the admissions office, they, they might screen on standardized scores. Right. So they're um, going to look for some sort of threshold and all of those individuals that don't meet that threshold. Um, they're just not going to look at those particular individuals. Right. And so there is this um, bottom threshold sort of you would imagine ranking people in terms of it. And then you just kind of cut out the the bottom um, individuals on that that rank. I know that sounds really awful to do that, but that's just one way to sort. Not everybody does that, not, or not everybody and not every program does that, but that's one way to do it, right? So um, another way that this is probably the best way um, is look at research interests. So look to see at whether the people actually read, the applicants actually read the, um, you know, the research areas that people are working on, read their papers, um, talking about the research areas that are related that's going to get people really excited when you do that, right? So if you've actually indicated that you've read the work that these individuals, uh, you know, the different um, faculty at the PhD programs that you're applying to, then that's going to go a long ways, uh, more so than any standardized score. Um, but usually, you know, that there's a pretty core, there's a correlation there um, with standardized scores and as well as people that are going to put in the effort to look at research interests, right? So the other thing um, people tend to look at is, you know, schools and programs that those potential candidates actually attended, right? So if they went to, I don't know, if they went to Princeton, um, you know, it's a pretty good school. Lots of people are going to recognize that, right? It's got a good brand, a good name. Um, but if you went to you know, the, um, you know, International Sandbox Institute of, um, you know, Tallahassee. Ha um, good luck <laughs> um, in terms of convincing people that that is a legitimate school that, um, you know, just doesn't have the same status credibility and those things. And so you want to look at that. And then finally, I think this is really important that most people overlook 
um, is the references that uh, people have or potential candidates have. Those references are incredibly important, especially if it's from references that we know. Um, we really take those those people seriously. Um, you know, faculty will look at those those candidates extremely seriously. If it's coming from somebody that we know that said that this person is really good, we'll look at this person. We are going to look at that person, right? So, um, you know, do PhD acceptance rates actually vary a, a substantial amount across programs? Yes, um, a lot. Uh, so you notice some of the the distribution is that some of them are are, are quite, um, you know accepting of, of different PhDs and our potential PhD candidates. And the way that they, those programs work is that you get accepted and then um, you kind of have to fend for yourself to get through the PhD program. And those that do well, um, you know, they, they probably would have done well anywhere. Um, but the ones that don't do well, they, they really flounder and they probably wouldn't have gotten into different schools, right? And so that's what you're looking for with this is um, or it's just kind of the style in terms of the emissions in terms of what people are looking for a lot of the top programs they're only going to bring in a couple of individuals because uh, they don't want to spend a lot of time and effort with working with a ton of different people um, and to have them sort of drop out of the phd program it's challenging it's really difficult um, and so you're looking for people that can accept that challenge and run with it, right? So the var the variance um, in acceptance rates is really big. Um, and so just expect that, but you know, better programs have lower acceptance rates across the board, right? And that's, that's an important thing to think about. So that's all I wanna talk about in this video. So again, you know, the average acceptance rate is uh, one in eight, so 18, uh, 13%. Hopefully in a couple of years, they'll have more data and stuff like that to, to add to these, these polls and stuff. But, um, and then the mode, so this is what most people answered was around um, you know, 3%. So pretty, um, pretty amazing in terms of acceptance rate. So one in 30 uh, are gonna get into a PhD program. So um, hopefully you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you do, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.